Good morning, good morning. Let us all stand together. star. Amen. It's good to be in the house of God one more time. This is the day that the Lord had made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And we thank God that we, when we really sing that song one more time, God has really allowed us to be able to come and pray together one more time. Had two friends uh, that passed away. Um, during the week and both were working outside and went inside and they just passed away you know when you when you turn out these lights and close the door we don't even make it we don't know if we're gonna make it back to next sunday or not but i just believe we ought to give god all we can while we can and, and i thank god for and i know you do too that he has allowed us to be able to come together one more time. We never know when it's gonna be the last time. You know, I told my wife, she used to always say, she said, well, you know, I try to live every day like it's my last day. I said, and one day you're gonna be right. <laughs> one day you're gonna be right. And I say to you that we wanna live our life First of all, while it's pleasing to him, Christ. And when we do that, that's all we are counted for. 
Amen. God bless you. God keep you. God make his face to shine upon each of you. Bless the rest of our service. For in Christ's name we pray. Good morning again. You're looking so wonderful. Well, I guess you don't feel wonderful. You feel wonderful this morning. All right, all right. Our congregation selection is our great is our God. How great is our God.
Lord and Savior. It is indeed under the profession of her faith that we now baptize her in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Good day at Morning Star. Individuals have confessed Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And Lord, we just thank you. And Lord, just continue to send them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. us bow our head for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. And Father, we just thank you for just allowing us to just come out to your house of worship once again. Father, we just thank you for all those that came out. We pray for those that had a desire to come that just weren't able to make it. And Father, we just pray that everything that we do here today will bring honor, praise, and glory to you. Father, we just thank you as we enter the sanctuary this morning had a beautiful Sunday school. Uh, the McNairs taught this class. We had a beautiful devotion this morning. And Father, we just thank you so much for the new people that came and gave their lives to you. And Father, we just pray that we will give them all the help and aid that they need to help keep them on the right track. And Father, we just thank you so much for them. And Father, we just pray for our church. We ask that you just continue to bless us and guide us and direct us in the way that you have us go. We pray for our pastor, and we ask that you continue to bless him. And Father, bless his family. Bless every family that's represented here at Morning Star Baptist Church. Father, we just continue to just thank you for us so much, and we can't thank you enough because you do so much for us. And Father, we are not worthy, but you bless us anyway. And Father, we just pray for our city. Father, we just pray for the violence that's going on in our city. And Father, all the things that are going in our city, we know that you are aware of it. And Father, we just pray that hearts and minds will be touched and changed. Father, we just pray for our state. We just pray for this nation. And Father, we know that we have so many things that are going on. But Father, we have so many good things that are going on. We have a lot of good young people, those that came here and gave their lives to you today. And Father, we just pray that we will work with them. And Father, we will support them in the things that they do. And Father, we just thank you so much for just allowing us to be here at this church today. And Father, we just thank you and praise you and say this prayer in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Morning Star, we ask that you would stand at this time. <laughs> to our visitors, welcome to Morning Star, Reverend John Johnson is our pastor. If you're without a church home, we welcome you to join with us. Again, we welcome you to the star. Bring that one to the studio.
saw some young folks being baptized today. We saw some older folks being baptized today. That make it a good day. And I just want to let them know, trust in God, trust in Christ. We won't fail you.
awesome and how blessed it is <clears throat> to be in the presence of the Lord on this day. Amen. Amen. We certainly thank God for our candidates and, and uh, we're thankful for what God is doing. And, uh, today we're blessed to have a grandmother and a granddaughter. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. On first Sundays, we take time to recognize birthdays and anniversaries. And uh, if you're here this morning and you celebrate a birthday in the month of April, uh, April yeah. <laughs> amen. Would you stand? Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to each of you all. Uh, today is Brother Mike's birthday. He wants us to know that this is his day. Also, uh, those who are celebrating wedding anniversary in the month of April, would you stand? Amen, amen, amen. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> We're so blessed this morning to have one of our members who's been ill for quite some time now. And she's back in the sanctuary today. Sister Walker, would you stand? Amen. It's good to see her this morning. Amen. Amen. We are so thankful to have you. God is, God is so good, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Thank you so kindly. Amen. Uh, all the parents and the grandparents, family members of our, uh, uh, those persons who were baptized today, we want to recognize you today. Would you stand? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you all. Thank you all so much for being here for them on this day. Amen. Uh, the others have not come, uh, come out yet, so we'll, we'll do right-handed fellowship after, uh, after the sermon and give them some more time. I'm going to go ahead and get started with the message, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. But now I'm saved. we come just thanking you, O oh God, for all your many, many blessings, O oh God. God, we thank you, O oh God, for uh, these who have uh, confessed you as their Lord and Savior, and for now who have, O oh God, uh, followed you in scriptural baptism, O oh God. God, we thank you. We praise you for it, O oh God. And God, uh, I ask, O oh God, that you would help us as a church to undergird them move them in the way that they should go in thee. 
And God, that we pray for our sick and our shut in. Oh God, those are who desire to be here and, and cannot, oh God. Lay your healing hands upon them, oh God. And God, that we lift up Sister Janice Gibbs specially this morning, oh God. And she's requested that we will lift her up in prayer, oh God. And God, we know you are an able God and you're able to do all things but fail, oh God. And so Father, in the name of Jesus, Touch her body today, oh God. Master, oh God, give her strength, oh God, like only you can, oh God. And, and God, uh, we lift up Sister Clark, Gloria Clark, and we, we lift up Sister Dixie Jones. And uh, uh, God, we, uh, we, we lift up, oh God, all of our sick and shut in, oh God. And, and God, uh, we pray now that you would speak a word from heaven. Give us strength and boldness, oh God, to do all that you called us to do. And, oh, God, I pray that someone may declare, what must I do that I might be saved? We ask this, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. invite your attention to the gospel of St. John, uh, John chapter 21, uh, beginning at verse number one. Uh, John chapter 21, uh, began reading at verse number one. And it reads according to the King James, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise he showed himself, and there were together Simon, Peter, Thomas of Didymus, and Nathaniel, and Canaan and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and, and two other disciples. And Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. And they say unto him, We also go with thee. And they went forth and entered into a ship, and immediately uh, that night, they caught nothing. But when the morning was come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? And they answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast thy net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. And therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. And now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and he did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciple came in little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it was 200 cubits, dragging the nets with fish. Oh, you ought to get that tonight. Dragging the nets with fish. And as soon as they were come to land, they saw five coals there, and fish laid their own, and bread. And Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which you have now caught. And Simon Peter said unto uh, 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 Simon Peter went up and drew net to land full of great fish, and a hundred and fifty three. For all that were there were so many, yet was not one the net broken. And Jesus said unto them, Come and die. And none of the disciples durst ask, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Yes. And Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time 
that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was risen from the dead. Amen. Thus ended the reading. You may be seated in his presence. The grass withered and the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. If it will be that of the Holy Spirit, I want to talk about the other side of Easter. The other side of Easter. Many times we prepare for Easter Sunday morning. We're, we're uh, buying the right clothes. Uh, we're uh, dyeing the right eggs. And uh, we even remember that Easter is about Jesus. And uh, we prepare to see him go to Calvary. We prepare to see the backdraft of Calvary, uh, the place of the skull. Uh, they they see him as he died on Calvary, and you do know he did die that Friday, and he he's placed in a borrowed man's tomb, and and for many of us, uh, that's what the yeah the side of Easter in pre preparation for Easter. We recognize what he has done and how he has done. We recognize even that not only did he die, but on the third day morning, he rose from the grave with all power of heaven and earth in his hands. And, and, uh, and we, we recognize all of these events that happen uh, at Easter. But my brothers and sisters, sometimes we have to consider the other side of Easter, the, the other side of resurrection. Uh, because after Easter, what do you do after resurrection day? And the real challenge for believers, even for our disciples, is tempting to go back to where we were. It's tempting to go back to who we were. It's tempting to go back to doing the same old things that we used to do. Uh, the, the, the disciples were true to form. They go back to do what they only knew before Easter. And oh, my brothers and sisters, I want to challenge us this morning that don't be tempted to go back doing the same old thing. God did something for you in Easter, and it's not just worthy to be celebrated on Easter morning, but it ought to be celebrated every day of our lives. Uh, listen, there's resurrection power, not just in Jesus, but he's given you that same power. And I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, after Easter, there ought to be a change in us. There ought to be a change in our conversation. There ought to be a change in where we go, what we go with, and what we do when we get there. My brothers and sisters, I would argue, on the other side of Easter, there ought to be a change in and I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, Easter is a time when we get to know the Lord, when we get to understand who Jesus is. And, and even for these who are baptized today, that life ought to be different from now on. Times ought to change in our lives because of the experience that we had on today. My brothers and sisters, I would argue, I would argue that, that, that these brothers, uh, they go back to what they used to do. And, uh, it was on Friday that Jesus would be hung on the cross. But the Bible says that, that, uh, 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 that the disciples, instead of being with Jesus, they go hide in the room. And, uh, and they are there until Jesus shows up the first time. And, uh, and the Bible says that even Thomas wasn't there, uh, but he had to be there for the second visit. And, and the Bible says, yet they are, they are hid away, but all of a sudden, Peter stands up. Peter says, brothers, I'm tired of this. Jesus did tell them to wait for him. Uh, but he was tired of waiting. And, and y'all, and that just like some of us, uh, uh, sometimes we pray that God will make a change in our lives. We, we pray that God will bless us with this and that. But before God can move, we done got in the way. We got 
started. We going back to do what I used to do. I know how to make $50. I'm going to go back and do that. But God got so much more for you if you just wait on the Lord. Yeah. Listen, the Bible says, Peter says, I'm tired of waiting. I go fishing. Peter said, I'm going to do the stuff I know how to do. He gets back and, and the brothers with him, Bible says six of them go with him and they go fishing. You do remember when Jesus met them, they were what? Fishing. They, they were fishing. So they go back to before they met Jesus. Jesus who had died and left them there now comes back and reappears to them but now he's left them again how many of us sometimes feel like God done left us he brought me this far but he done forgot about it. he don't know me he don't love me anymore but I want to tell you after Easter you got to know that he's still in love with you he's still going to make a way for you but they that wait upon the Lord listen I declare you got to wait on it the Bible says they, they get up and they, they go fishing and the Bible says that these are experienced fishermen now. But the Bible says after fishing all night long, they called nothing. Now, now my brothers and sisters, I, I can identify with them. I think I've gone fishing a few times. But if I'm not wrong, I ain't never caught a fish. Now, y'all can, can talk about me, uh, but some of y'all ain't never caught a fish either. <laughs> now, now, I'm sure if I went to fishing with Brother Snell, I would catch a fish because Brother, Brother Snell been catching fish a long time. <laughs> These brothers been fishing a long time, but the Bible says they fished all night and they caught nothing. And y'all... Y'all, sometimes, sometimes, when we are disobedient to God and we get out doing that thing that we know how to do and you don't get it. You know how you used to roam around in the, in the bars, in the nightclub, and you ain't have no problem finding, yeah, 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 yeah. But now you're saved, you're born again and filled with the Holy Ghost. And you go back and... Let, 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 I'm just trying. I'm just trying to help with y'all. That 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 sometimes because you've experienced Easter, uh, listen. Sometimes you can't go back and do like you used to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That stuff that used to make you have this euphoria, you go back to that now. You don't get the same. <laughs> I'm just trying to help us, y'all, that, that, that there's this understanding, y'all, that, that, that Easter has happened for them. The resurrection had happened for them. And now they don't see Jesus. They don't hear from him. And they don't know what to do but go back to what they used to do. The Bible says they go fishing. They catch nothing. And the Bible says in the morning, man on the side of the seashore, Hey guys, children, that's his word, y'all. Children. See, children do that kind of stuff. When they don't, they locked up and they don't know, they find something to do. Jesus says, Children, have you found any meat? After tossing all that, what do you have to show for all by yourself? And sometimes, y'all, sometimes. We ask God and we decide we're going to do it our way. God will leave you alone and let you do it your way. But I declare to you, you will never get what he would have given you. This, the, text says, the text says, he says, have you any meat? And they declare, no. That, 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 that nothing has, has got. And, but you know what? I, I'm so glad that Jesus didn't like some of us. You made your bed and I'm going to make you sit in it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Jesus says, tell you what you do. <laughs> Cast your net. 
<laughs> on the right side. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm not here to debate what's the difference in the left or the right. But Jesus' words was, cast it. Evidently, they hadn't been doing what Jesus said to do. And the Bible says that they caught so many fish. And, 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 and y'all, I, I just test to believe. Because you got to remember, y'all, this isn't the first time this has happened to them. Uh, they've had an encounter with Jesus before and caught fish. And, 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 and I, I just, I have a sneaky suspicion that John said, wait a minute, I done seen this before. Uh, and the only reason we got what we had was because Jesus was there. And, 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 and John said, wait a minute, y'all, this got to be the Lord. Uh, th uh, I can't see him. Uh, I can't quite understand him, but but I know that the only way this could happen, he has to be here somewhere. And, and the Bible says Peter, Peter jumps in the water. That Now, he's not fully naked, but his outer garments are not on. And, and so he places them and jumps in the water. Oh, blessed be God. Blessed God. Blessed God. The Bible says that he swims up and the other disciples come behind him. And the text says they have so many, they have so many fish. But, but notice here, y'all, he doesn't even say that he just got a lot of fish. He says he got 153 fish. 153 fish. Y'all, I went back to try to see what the number meant. And there are many philosophies out there about it. But the bottom line is, is that it really doesn't matter. But what it signifies for them was, was that they caught nothing. But with the help of Jesus, when Jesus pronounced a miracle in their lives, they got 153 fish. That's 153 more than they had after all night. And what I'm trying to tell somebody, God trying to do 153 in your life. God is trying to transform in your life. He wants to work a miracle in your life. Will you be obedient and wait for him? Sometimes we want a new job. We want that promotion. But before he gives it to us, we jump up or we run somewhere else. And now you outside of where God wants you to be. Wait on him. Wait on him, y'all. The Bible says they brought in all of these 153 fish. And the text says the net was so full, but the net didn't break. Oh, blessed be God. Blessing. Let's, that is that God got something for you. It's so big, but you're not going to lose one of them. <laughs> You're not going, because your net is over full, nothing going to fall out. All 153 made it back. Listen, listen, y'all. And the Bible says that Jesus invites them. He says, once they've been fishing all night, he says, come and dine with me. But notice what happens, y'all. And I promise you, I'm done, y'all. When they get to where Jesus is, oh, blessed be God. That, that's all. L listen, they, Jesus, he was coming all the time. But they got in the hurry of Jesus. And when they finally get to where he, where he is, the Bible says Jesus already got fish. <laughs> he didn't even need the fish was already there. If, if Peter would have just waited on him, God would have already summoned them there. The Bible says that when they got there, Peter, God had a fire. Oh, ooh. Some of y'all know how to fix fish. Some of you all know what a fish fry is like. But listen, when they got there, they could already smell fish. When they got there, they could already, the bread and the fish, was. they had a fish sandwich, and they didn't have to pay for it. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. The Bible says when they got there, it was already there. Oh, my brother and sister, I would argue, if you wait on God, 
he'll put you in a position that everything you always wanted, it'll be right there. <laughs> the house that you always want. Listen, if you wait on him, y'all, he'll prepare it for you and it'll be right. <laughs> but I declare to you, y'all, you got to wait for him. And, and, and listen, and after Easter, you got to do what he says for you to do. He told the disciples a long time ago when he met them on the seashores, he says, I'm going to make you fishermen of men. And yet you back out fishing for fish. I got all the fish you need. What I need you to do is to carry out my mission. I started, I've been showing you, I've been teaching you for now three and a half years. Now I need you to go and do what you saw me do. I need you to go out and fulfill my mission. Go ye into all the world. Preach and teach to all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And do whatsoever I called you. He says, you do and say, and lo, I'll be with you always. I want to argue my brothers and sisters. That's what we're about after Easter. We're about making disciples. We're about going out, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ to a dying world. Sharing the gospel to Jesus Christ in neighborhoods where, where, where crime and all kinds of stuff are there. But let them know that there's a God that lives and that he desires to live in your heart. My brothers and sisters, that's what Easter ought to be about yeah. telling the dying world that I've met a savior yeah. and he lives today. Yeah. Listen, ask me how I know he lives. <laughs> he lives uh, within my heart. Uh, and my brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm done y'all, but, but that's the reason why when we show up work on Monday morning, we ought to show up like we are Christian. Listen, and listen, and you ain't got to tell nobody you're Christian, but they ought to see it how you walk. Uh, they ought to see it in how you talk to one another. They ought to see it in how you communicate with one And listen, they ought to see it in how you do your job. Because I'm not just working for this man, but I'm working for the man. I'm working for the Lord. I'm, I'm a disciple of his. And it ought to reflect in all that I do. After Easter, what do you look like after Easter? And I declare, he will make your life brand new. Just as he died on Calvary, just as he rose the third day morning, just as he lives right now, he'll do the same thing in your life as well. God, our Father, we come in Jesus' name. We thank you for all our eyes have seen. All I ears have heard. We thank you for the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit. Minister in the midst of this invitation. Seek to draw men, women, boys and girls unto yourself. Oh God, have your way in this invitation. We'll give you praise for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to come to Jesus just now. You may come by letter, Christian experience, candidate for baptism. I invite you to come. You don't have to fix yourself up or make yourself right just as you are. God has made provisions for you. It's no happenstance that you're here today. God has orchestrated that you would be here. And he's inviting you to give your life to him today. Won't you trust him? This invitation is to you. Won't you come? Come to Jesus just Come. There's room, there's time for you. Won't you come today? Just, just now, just now, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just. He will save you.
Brothers and sisters, we invite you to bow with us as we pray over these elements. God, our Father, we come in Jesus' name. Lord, we love you. We thank you, O oh God. We ask now, Master, that you bless these elements, O oh God, this bread and this wine. Let it show forth your broken body and your shed blood. And your word says, do this in remembrance of me. And, O oh God, uh, we confess our sins today, O oh God, and all that we've done that makes us short of your glory. God, your word says that if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to cleanse us, uh, to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh God, uh, bless this time as we commune together. Until that day, we shall be with you forever. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. 
My brothers and sisters, uh, as we prepare to leave on today, um, on the fourth Sunday of this month, um, is it from the, uh, we're going to do a, a special re a recognition for compassion care, and uh, we're going to be sharing some information uh, with you about it. And uh, it's one of those things that, that I kind of want to get the church involved in, those persons who would like to. But uh, on the fourth Sunday of this month, uh, we're going to have a, a campaign for it that's similar to what we do for breast cancer. And, uh, and we'll be sharing more about it on next week. And uh, I want Paulette to come down because I, I wanted to share that on last Sunday was Easter and we wanted to fulfill it for Easter. But uh, we just want to thank you all so kind for all the many acts that you've shown during pastor's anniversary time. We were rushing that Sunday, but I wanted to just take time to say thank you. We love you, and we're ready to serve uh, for the rest of our time. <laughs> Amen. God bless you all. The Bible says after this, they rose and sang a hymn. We're going to go to the back door and fellowship.